Hey guys, it's Kevin Osterner here for the original Season 2, Episode 20, City Beneath the Sea, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode because we had that amazing cliffhanger next week. I really didn't know what was going to happen in this episode because of that, and I thought that, again, as usual, amazing episode. I mean, it's the originals. It's always amazing, but this was probably the best episode of the season because about 10 million things changed in this episode, I have to say. I mean, seriously, things that happened in this episode I would have never expected to happen, and I love that. I would have never expected the amount of shit that happened it just happened it really makes me question what's gonna happen in the finale now but let's get into this episode because it was amazing and there's a lot to talk about so right away we see dahlia giving this really good monologue all about family and basically um she's talking about how family is a terrible uh burden and we see klaus we see klaus dagger in his coffin daggered and Haley and the wolves arriving at the bayou with hope and Josh, we see, is still distraught over Aiden's loss, and Davina mourns Cole still. I have to say, it's probably what and Freya's also thinking about her past, and Dolly's working on some sort of blood spell. I have to say, it's probably one of the best openings we've had this season. I mean, it was such a powerful opening. It's just showing where everyone's place is for the rest of the season, what they're going to be doing now, and I think it's really well done. So, Klaus wakes somewhere else as a result of her spell and sees Dahlia, and they're not in the real world. They're in this other realm that Dahlia made, and I loved these scenes. I mean, Dahlia is, of course, the enemy on the show, but you actually kind of get some sympathy for her in this episode, which I actually kind of like seeing. It kind of shows that these characters are layered. That's something I love about the original, is that these characters are very, very layered. I mean, a lot of people, yeah, they think Klaus is this killer and everything. He's a very layered character. He cares about his family. He's a family-first kind of guy. He does whatever he can to protect his family. I've talked about this before. And Dahlia, again, we see is a very layered character, which I would have never suspected, but I love that. So basically, he looks down, sees the blood on his chest, and asks what she's done and where Hope is, and he tells her to get out of his head, but he says, but she says he's in hers, and says he's lying, daggered by his brother's um, hand, and Dahlia offers him proposition, and he says to just say what she wants, because he has no idea what she wants at this point, and she tells him to listen, and they're in an ancient village, murder, and mayhem break out as a result of a Viking invasion. So you can tell that they are definitely in the past somewhere. Because Dolly and Esther then cower behind a cart and pledge to remain together. And then a man grabs Esther and Dolly throws back with her magic. The two girls have their heads bagged and are dragged away. And we actually see that Esther and Dolly actually are quite good friends, which I like seeing. And Dolly says she and Esther were the sole survivors of the carnage. And she says she and Klaus can be allies. And at this point, Klaus is like, what the hell are you talking about? There's no way I'm going to do that. And I thought that was really interesting overall. Just really made us care more for Dolly. Now, we know that Dolly was Esther's, you know, sister, of course, but... It did show that they were pretty close. So in the quarter, Freya tells Elijah that he must get Hope back and says that they need the baby to help. And basically, Dahlia, and basically, they, you know, they said they need the baby to help end Dahlia or they have no chance. And she said Dahlia is powerful magic, but she has collected items to make a killing spell that will render their aunt mortal so they can kill her. And Elijah asks if she wants to use Hope as bait. And he says he can't allow her to do this because... And I agree with what Elijah's saying. It's not going to do anything if you use Hope as bait because that's what Dahlia wants. If you give Dahlia Hope, then you're basically letting Dahlia win. I mean, totally, that's exactly what you're doing. So Freya says there is no other way to protect Hope. And Elijah says if Dahlia dies, Freya's free. So he knows that she's not being um, selfless. And Freya says she can bring Hope back with or without his help. And Marcel wants Rebecca, basically, and I thought that was um interesting that we saw that, so I was wondering if Freya is actually serious, because again, I don't fully trust Freya, I really don't, I mean, you don't know if you can trust her at this point, so everything she says just is kind of shady to me, you know, I'm, in, I'm kind of in that part point where I'm like, should I trust her, do I not trust her, I mean, it, just everything she says is kind of like, I, I don't know if I can trust her. So Marcel wants Rebecca to sit out the fight at the Magic Block Club. He says he and Elijah agree she needs to stay out of the way. And Marcel reminds her that she's linked to 18 young witches. And if something happens to her, they'll all die. And obviously, that's not going to be good. So basically, they haul in Vincent. And Rebecca demands he unlink her, which... I thought it was going to happen this episode. I mean, I legitimately thought that was going to happen. There's so much that needs to happen this season that I thought they were just going to end this plot really quickly. I mean, they ended the whole Rebecca um, possessed thing really quickly, so I thought they'd end this quickly as well. But 
basically Vincent says it's really tricky dark magic and says Rebecca has to work it herself and Vincent says he wants to help but isn't doing any more magic personally and Vincent says after this he's done and is not the rare witch for hire so he's basically pointless at this point it's not gonna work so Marcel leaves and He's trying to somehow convince Vincent, but you know that Vincent's not going to do it. And I can understand why Vincent doesn't want to do it. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He's not really experienced with this kind of thing. I can totally understand that. So Cammie's at work when Elijah finds her, and she asks why he hasn't called and if he's talked to Klaus. And I was really hoping that Cammie would try to get Klaus, you know, get Elijah to listen to Klaus and show him that Klaus didn't do all these terrible things. And basically... He says that he daggered Klaus, who's now sleeping, and she says Klaus didn't kill Aiden, but Elijah isn't moved, and he doesn't really believe her at this point, and Cammie says he can't leave the, him that way, and Elijah says that her feelings for Klaus are clouding her judgment, and I, I do see his point. I understand what he's, what he's saying. I mean, yeah, she can, she can't, she doesn't need to control her feelings for Klaus a little bit. I understand what Elijah is saying there. Um... But she does have a point when she says that Klaus is not really the one that is causing all of this. I mean, he's not. He's not the one that's causing all this. It's that simple. Um, and uh, Klaus needs to definitely understand that this is not Klaus's fault. It, it, it never was Klaus's fault, and it, it's not Klaus's fault. So... I think definitely um, Elijah needs to listen to Cammy because Cammy does know what she's talking about. She knows that, you know, she's telling Elijah this is not Klaus's fault because it's not Klaus's fault. It's that simple. While Klaus, you know, has done some terrible things, he did not kill Aiden. So I like that Cammy is trying to get Klaus to, you know, is trying to get Elijah to think, would your brother really kill Aiden? Because we know he didn't kill Aiden, and I like that she's trying to get him to think no, you know, to basically tell him the truth, that he didn't kill Aiden because Klaus just simply would not do something like that. And I understand why Elijah would think that. I mean, he just thinks that he went too far or whatever. I can understand that, but would Klaus really go that far? I mean, I don't ever think Klaus would ever really stoop that low where he would just kill Aiden like that. I don't think that would do something like that. He's not exactly the person that Elijah thinks he is, and... Elijah definitely doesn't know, you know, needs to think more about what uh, Klaus did, which I like seeing this scene definitely. I thought that was very well done that uh, Cammy is, you know, trying to convince him that Klaus can be trusted because he can be trusted and it, Elijah didn't really seem to trust him and I like that she's trying to convince him to uh, trust Klaus. So I thought that was really good. So basically, Elijah then says that if... Basically, we, we then see that he dagger Klaus. You know, he says he dagger Klaus, who is now sleeping. She says Klaus didn't kill Aiden. And basically, he says, until Lope is safe, Klaus remains daggered. And then says he needs her help. And Elijah calls to warn Haley that Frey is working a low care spell and that they need to run. So I thought that was really good. I mean, I understand his point. You know, they need to keep Hope safe, and having Klaus out might not keep Hope safe. However, doing what Freya wants to do is not going to do any bit of good either. So Jackson's preparing to bury Aiden and says he has no choice but to bury him in less than ideal circumstances. And Haley says that the wolves deserve to know that the lives lost to protect hope matter. And because it's true. That's why Aiden died. He died for hope. And she says to take Aiden's body downriver and gives him a true crescent burial. And I thought that was really good that because it's true that he didn't die just because he died. He died to protect hope. That's really why Aiden died. So Vincent st um, studies while Rebecca whines about no jazz music at the club, and Elijah and Cammie show up and tell Rebecca about Freya wanting to use Hope as bait. And Elijah is some enchanted dark objects and wants to make a proxy to draw Dahlia toward that and away from Hope. So I think that's definitely a better plan, to, you know, to get her away from Hope. That's probably what they need to do. Um, but... Elijah wants Vincent to help, but he's not really inclined. He says he's only agreed to help Rebecca. That's all he wants to do. You know, he's losing magic already, so he doesn't really want to help them. So Elijah chokes him, and Cammie says to stop, and that she'll call Davina to help. And he says time is of the essence, and they have until nightfall. So Josh is packing, and I have to say, Josh is probably the mo gets the most heartbreaking stuff in this episode, besides Klaus. Because um, the stuff with Josh, you just feel so bad for him. I mean, Aiden was his boyfriend. They were playing him running away together, and he finds a shirt of Aiden's and sniffs it, and Marcel shows up and asks if he's sure about this. 
Josh says there's nothing else to do. He throws his suitcase across the room, says he can't get revenge on Klaus, can't turn to his non-existent family, and says that he really has no choice but to leave. And he asks what Marcel wants, but Marcel says he's just there for him and not for any other reason. And I thought that was really good because... It's just reminding me, I think the reason Marcel is doing this because he's taking Davina's advice to heart. You know, he wasn't there for Davina with Cole, but Josh is like Davina to him. I mean, really, he is. And he wants to do, he wants to help Josh grieve, definitely. I think that's really good. And Josh says he and Aiden were going to leave together and says he said goodbye. And it's this is such a moving line. So you goodbye to everyone but Aiden. And Josh is crying and says he didn't even get to say goodbye to him. And you just feel so bad for Josh. I mean... They had a great relationship, but Aiden had to sacrifice himself, and that's really what had to happen there. So, Klaus is in a Viking hovel with Dahlia, who says she was held captive there for years, and we see a Viking throw a young Dahlia to the ground. She says she had to perform dark magic to, for them to spare Esther from their abuses, and Klaus asks if she wants sympathy, because it seems like that's what she wants. She wants to get sympathy here, and says nothing will justify her trying to enslave Hope. And he says he sees his young mother come in smiling, and Dahlia asks if she's been with Michael, and Esther says they were just talking. And Dahlia shows her a spell that can get them away together and Esther says she doesn't want to practice magic anymore kind of reminding you of um Vincent right now because of course Vincent doesn't want to perform magic and says Michael will protect her now and she says they're gonna marry and have a family and Dolly reminds her that she already has family and she says they made a promise and Esther says she loves Michael and wants to bear his children and Dolly begs her to stay but Esther slaps her hand away and goes and Dolly is crushed and hums the song they sang as children and you can kind of see why Dahlia did what she did. Honestly, because of that, I can understand why Dahlia did what she did. So older Dahlia looks pained at the memory and kneels near her young self as she cries. And I honestly felt really bad for Dahlia. I mean, all she wanted was to help out Esther, but Esther didn't want to have help. So I really did feel bad there. So... We then see um, D Davina looks at Cammy's catalog of dark objects and <laughs> Rebecca's complaining. Davina tells her to leave something alone, but she uncovers it and sees dead birds. And Davina says it's a resurrection spell for Cole. And I was like, okay, finally we're going to have this resurrection spell. And Rebecca says Cole used representational magic and shows her a small golem he used. And Davina says if they can replicate Hope's power source, they can use the golem as a decoy to kind of, you know, get rid of, you know, to basically kind of take down Dahlia. So the wolves carry Ains Coffin as they go deeper into the bayou. And Jackson and Haley talk about their painful adolescence as wolves. And he cursed and had her a troubled teen and... Hope cries, and Haley said, and it's just a really good scene. You see that, you know, what they went through as wolves and everything. And Hope's crying, and Haley says she has to stop and feed her. Jackson says they can stop and set a defense, and I honestly was most worried for them in this episode. I didn't know if Dolly was going to come for them. I didn't know if they really were safe. I mean, after that whole speech, I mean, really nowhere is safe from Dolly. Freya put it best when she said nowhere is safe from Dolly. So Dolly says Esther left her for one of the men that destroyed their village and stole them away. And she says Klaus also um, was also betrayed by his family and was just unjustly portrayed as the villain. It's true. Klaus is not the villain. He is a guy that just does things because he's very powerful and he wants to help out his family. And they watch young Dahlia rage against her circumstances. And Klaus says to undagger him and stop this. And Dahlia says she's not done showing him what he needs to know. So he can learn about his mother and the fate of his daughter. And Klaus mocks Dahlia, but she says she didn't enslave Freya, but she shield but shielded her form herself. And Klaus sees a young Freya working extremely strong magic, seemingly out of control. And Dahlia cautioned her, but Freya rants at her being confined and this is not, I have to tell you, this is not, one of the things I love to hear, that this is not fake. What Dolly is showing Klaus is not fake. This all actually happened. And she's showing this to him because she wants him to understand what she went through. She wants him to see that they are very alike. Because who would have thought that Klaus and Dolly are alike? But honestly, after this, they are extremely alike. And basically... Dahlia told her that people will hate her for her power and she must be careful and Freya rants and the magic swirls and Freya's nose begins to bleed and the wind whips around them and she finally collapses into Dahlia's arms and she sings to Freya to calm her and Dahlia says firstborn witches in their bloodline have uncontrollable power. That's why Freya is so powerful and she says 
Hope's power will grow unchecked because of his hybrid blood mixed in. And she says Hope will devastate New Orleans and says she's the only one that can save Hope. So now it kind of makes sense what Dolly wants to do, honestly. Because if Hope is as powerful as Freya, it's going to end up terribly. Because, of course, Freya was not aware of her powers. She didn't know what she was doing. Just like Davina didn't really know what she was doing. So she tells Klaus he needs her and he looks thoughtful. And I think that was really good there, because now we see that not only does she doesn't want to kidnap Hope, what she wants to do is protect Hope from just becoming too powerful and ultimately killing someone or killing herself, which who knows what could happen to Hope when Hope gets older, honestly. She could end up like Davina, she could end up like Freya. I mean, there are millions of possibilities, and I think that was really interesting overall. It really made us care more for Dahlia, and we actually justify what she's doing now, which I, I would have never suspected that they would have gotten us to do that, but I love that, because again, all the characters are layered. They all are, and Dahlia is just as layered as Klaus is, which I thought was awesome. So Elijah stands over Klaus's daggered body when Marcel comes in and he tells Marcel that Klaus didn't kill Aiden and Elijah says it was any number of witches and, and when he said that I'm like now you realize that and I was happy that Elijah did realize that because think about it Klaus wouldn't just kill Aiden that Klaus wouldn't do that and he asks if Elijah's thinking about pulling out the dagger and Elijah says he's not ready to release that Shakespearean rage and Marcel says Klaus was their biggest weapon in this war which really he was and now Elijah needs to think like his brother and ask himself what would Klaus do and I thought that was a really good line overall, definitely, because it's true. He needs to think like Klaus, and Elijah's not nearly as good of, as a thinker as Klaus. I mean, he's a good thinker, but he's not as good as a thinker. I mean, he's not as powerful as Klaus. He's powerful with his words, but Klaus is definitely the thing that they need right now. And Elijah doesn't really seem to want that right now, which I can kind of understand that he just wants, you know, um, them to ally and not Klaus, because he doesn't know if he can really, if they really need, or if he can really trust Klaus right now. I mean, he just needs to protect um, Hope, and the best way to do that might be to not have Klaus for a little bit, which I can kind of understand, but at the same time, I can't. I mean, I, I can sort of understand it. In, in a way, I can. So... Vincent intercepts uh, Cammie and gives her a spell that Rebecca can use to unlink herself from the other witches, and Cammie tells Vincent that he has a gift he should be using, and he says it's a loaded weapon, and he's putting his gun down. He says he doesn't want to be used by the vampires, wolves, or covens. He says the covens want him to speak for them, but says he's done. And Cammie says she lost her uncle and brother to a hex, but says it's more complicated than that. And she says magic in the right hands can be a good thing, but Vincent says his not his hands anymore. So so basically, they can use this magic, but he cannot give them this magic anymore. It's wearing off already, and he's really no use to them. So Cammy tells him about the golem idea and asks his advice, and Vincent says they need a heartbeat and says, no witch will be fooled by a doll, and he scribbles some notes on a paper. So Marcel talks to Haley, and she says, pack moral isn't great. She says Jackson is heartbroken over Aiden, and Marcel says she needs to be a leader at war, because now they don't have Klaus, Haley needs to be a leader, honestly. And I've heard a lot of people say, oh, Haley's not powerful, she's not that good. When she goes into, you know, protecting her daughter, she's like a mama bear, honestly. She's a full-on mama bear, she's gonna, she can take out these... She can take out anyone that goes after a child. I can totally see Haley becoming a leader because she cares so much about hope. That's the one thing that matters to her the most is hope. And what is the one thing that Haley's won all season? For her daughter to be safe. And if that involves Haley having to become, you know, as powerful as Klaus and having to do some things that Klaus would do, then Haley's going to do it. She's going to do whatever she can to protect hope. That Because that's what matters to Haley is making sure that Hope is safe and making sure that Hope is okay. That's really what matters to her. So, basically, Freya works a spell as, and I like what Marcel says, she needs to be their queen, not a friend, and he gives her some tough advice, and Freya works a spell as Elijah lurks nearby. She says they're out of time, and so she found Haley and tells him not to stand in her way, and Elijah tells her that Klaus painted Michael's ashes onto a painting with the soil, and he tells her to go to the compound and get them. She says he can't stop from getting the baby, but she said, but he says if they'll start the spell, he'll bring hope to her, and Klaus is still in Dahlia's mind and sees her care 
caring for Freya tenderly, and she tells Klaus that Hope will need her guidance as Freya did, but Klaus says she's too hostile of a teacher. There's a field of dead birds that Freya destroyed, and <clears throat> Dahlia says he can't find an instructor while he lays daggered, and says they may never free her. So Dolly admits that, which is true, they may never do anything for Hope. And Dolly admits that she needs Hope's power and says Freya turned on her because she denied her appearance. And Dolly says she needs Klaus and to remain in Hope's life as her father. And she says he can raise his daughter because that's all Klaus wants. He wants to somehow be a father for his daughter. He's wanted that all season. And she channels the power and Hope learns control. She says no one will ever test Klaus again with them at their side. And Dolly says, or he can lie dagger while Hope calls Jackson, you know, daddy and everything, and I thought that was a really powerful scene, definitely, because what has been the one thing that Klaus wants all season is some sort of place in Hope's life, and Dolly could finally give that to him, and I, I love seeing that. So Elijah goes to the bayou and is almost skewered by an arrow and an axe, and he calls them children. Jackson pounces and strikes him down. Elijah says he wants to see Hope, but Jackson threatens to bite and infect him. And Jackson says Elijah can't kill him because he'll lose Haley for good because she'll never forgive him. And Haley's there with Hope and says he shouldn't be there. He says, I have another plan to lure Dahlia into a trap so he can kill her. He says he needs a vial of the baby's blood, and... Haley agrees and says she's trusting him. He says once it's safe, she and Hope can come back and be safe with family. And Dahlia tells Klaus this is a one-time-only offer. And he asks what's the catch. And Dahlia says Haley will have to be eliminated because she will never give up on Hope. And he says that means Hope will hate him for killing her mother. And Dahlia says he can tell whatever story he wants because it will be the right choice for Hope. And basically... She blows some herb into his face, and he wakes in New Orleans. So basically, he she wants to do whatever she can to get Klaus to not end up, you know, she to get Hope to not end up like Esther, which to get to end up like um like uh Freya, which I think is a really good storyline overall, and that I thought was really great. Again, who would have thought that these two would have been somewhat related? But they really are very similar, and I just I love that. Klaus is able to pull the dagger from his chest, rise in health once again. It just shows how much of a badass he is. It's such an awesome scene. And when he did that, I'm like, I have no idea what he's going to do now. So Jackson's with Hope when Haley comes in and says the pack is gathering for the funeral. She asks if he and Aiden used to hang out there, and he says they were like brothers and always looked out for each other. And Jackson says the pack chose him and says they've lost too many to the Michaelsons. He says he can't live under Klaus's roof again. He says he loves her and Hope, and Hope, but says he can't go back with her if that's what she chooses. He asks her to decide who's her family and says he has to protect his own because... The whole season, she's been struggling with that. She's been struggling, okay, who do I trust? You know, she's been going between the Michaelsons and her pack. And he kisses her and says he'll give her some time to think. He goes out to the assembled pack to pay homage for to their fallen comrade. And Haley comes out and takes his hand and kisses him. She says she didn't need time to think. She says she spent her whole life looking for family and found them in his pack. She says she'll do right by them, starting with Aiden. And it really does not surprise me that she's allying with the pack because that's who's been with her longer. I can understand that. And Josh shows up for the funeral, and Jackson takes his hand in greeting. And Freya works a spell on one of Klaus's paintings, and Elias shows up and says... She says Dahlia will re be rendered mortal when she enters, and he says he can't have hope brought to harm. And then she says Dahlia will never harm another child again. Elijah grabs her, jams a syringe into her neck. She asks what he did, and he says he put Hope's blood into her, so Dahlia will now be hunting her, which honestly is an awesome thing that we got there. And he says Rebecca assured him it would work and tells her to continue with her preparations and then leaves. And I thought that was an awesome plan, honestly. Even though we know that Dahlia, you know, wants to take Hope to protect, Hector, I thought it was very interesting. They, of course, don't know that. So to them, she still wants to kill Hope and everything. So that is an awesome plan, I have to say. That's something that Klaus would have never thought of, and that's awesome. So at the cemetery, Davina prepares a spell in the crypt, and Vincent shows up, and I loved what, we're, what we get here, because... I've kind of been wondering where Davina was going to go this season. And what we get here, I thought was really interesting. And Vincent shows up and says she's brave to work a spell like that. She asks why he's there. And he asks if she can do this on her own. But she says she didn't ask for his help. He says he's there to ask for hers. He says that the coven needs a, la um, a ladder. And he says he doesn't want the job. He's done with it and wants to present her as an alternative to him. And he says she's someone who wants to use the craft to help people. And Davina reminds him she walked away from the coven. And Vincent says, 
says she'll have a direct line to all the ancestral magic in all its forms, including necromancy, and he says she'll need all that power to get her boyfriend back. And Davina's really intrigued by this, because what does she want more than anything? To get Cole back. So my question is, is Davina actually going to take this? I mean, this is a really interesting thing. It's a great position, but is Davina really going to take this? I'm not really sure. So Josh kneels by Aiden and then brushes the hair off his forehead, kiss him tenderly on the head, steps back. It's really hard to watch, and he says he never thought much about the immortality of being a vampire, but says suddenly he feels like that for a long time, and Haley hugs him, and Jackson covers Aiden's face gently, and he and Josh blur, push the bear, the bear into the water, and they light it, and... <sighs> He goes off in full traditional werewolf style, and Haley leaves Elijah a message saying she's calling to say goodbye and says she and Hope can't be part of their family. She says the family is trying to destroy Hope, and she can't let that happen. She says even free of the firstborn curse, she would still inherit all of Klaus's enemies plus him, and she says she doesn't want Hope to be a Michelson, which I can understand. I mean, the Michelsons are very powerful, and of course, Haley doesn't know that, you know, what Dolly is doing isn't a bad thing. So she doesn't know all that. So to her, this is the right thing to do. I can understand why she wants to do that. I just don't know if it's going to end well. So basically, she doesn't plan on working with the Michelsons. So Elijah and Rebecca listen to a message, and Klaus lurks out of sight listening. And Rebecca tells Elijah that Haley's right, and Klaus is still not well, but he staggers to find Dahlia. And she says she knew he was the smartest of his siblings and says he has no brute Viking blood in his veins. And Klaus says he never cared for Haley, but says the rest of his family will stand in defense for Haley. And she says they'll have to go through them as if he's prepared for it. And Klaus says they've more than earned it. He says they have to or hurry since Haley's preparing to feel with hope. And Dolly says she won't get far tonight, then stirs a cauldron of blood. A storm breaks out over the bayou, and Hope begins to cry. Dolly and Klaus share a smile. He's still not looking... He's still, um, you know, looking kind of hale and hearty, but seems really determined, and that's how the episode ends. So, huge stuff happened in this episode. I mean, now we have Klaus and Dahlia working together. Who would have ever thought that Klaus and Dahlia would end up working together? I mean, that's awesome that they're working together. I would have never thought that in a million years that Klaus would have allied with Dahlia, but he is, and that's awesome. He's doing it to protect his daughter. That's why he's doing this, and... That's something I loved about this episode, is that Klaus realized that Dahlia wants to just protect Hope. She doesn't want to kill Hope, she wants to protect Hope. And I thought that was awesome that we saw that, and it made us care more for Dahlia. And here's the thing, is Klaus going to be able to convince the rest of his family that Dahlia is doing a good thing? I mean, if Dahlia tells them this sob story, are they going to listen to her? And now we know that Freya was exaggerating what she said. She only said that so she could get on their side. And Freya was definitely exaggerating. It was not nearly as bad as they thought it was. Because she really didn't do anything that bad. I mean, Dahlia, Frey didn't want to be with Dahlia. She turned down Dahlia, and I thought that was really interesting. Is Haley making the right choice? Do you think that Haley is someone that can ally against all of, you know, the Michaelsons? Can she do this? I'm not sure. Um... Rebecca and Elijah, it seems like they are going to ally with her. Do you think that they are actually going to work without Klaus? I mean, I can't really see this working without Klaus, but we'll see what happens. And I kind of like that they're divided now. I think it's awesome because, honestly, no one really trusts Klaus. And the only person that seems like trusts Klaus and actually understands him is Dahlia, which I can understand. I mean, they both made sacrifices. They both are very powerful. They both are misunderstood. And I thought that was awesome. Taking Dahlia from the most powerful villain we've ever had on the show to someone you can actually care for and someone who you can understand what she's doing. And I love that they did that. It's my favorite part of the episode by far. I just, I thought that was awesome. This whole thing with Freya, is this going to work out? Is Dolly going to realize that the blood is actually Freya's? Or is she smarter than that? Because they might not think Dahlia is as smart as she is, and she could be a lot smarter than they think she is, and I think that's going to be really interesting to see if Dahlia does respond to this. Um... Let's talk about this whole thing with Vincent. Is Rebecca going to finally be able to get out of her body? I mean, Claire Holt's not playing a returning anytime soon. I know that. I know Claire Holt has said she's not playing a returning anytime soon. So I'm pretty sure Rebecca's just probably going to stay like this for forever. Uh, my question is, is Davina actually going to take this offer from Vincent? Because... I think it could be really good for her, honestly. She's a really powerful witch, and she has something to do now, and I think she definitely should try to take this offer. It's probably the best thing for her to do to take it, and I think she'd be great in this offer, definitely. I'd love for Davina to take that. That'd be awesome if she did. So, I think that'll be really cool if she does decide to take this offer. I'm not sure if she will, but we'll see if she does um, decide to take it. Um... 
And I guess the only question is, can they, okay, can, can this whole fight really work? Because let's talk, let's talk about sides here, because now we have Elijah, it seems like we have three different sides now. We have Elijah, Rebecca, and Freya, we have their whole side, along with Davina and Cami, and then we have the Wolves, Haley and Jackson, and then we have Klaus and Dahlia. So we have three people against each other who I could definitely see Elijah, Rebecca, and all of them allying, also Marcel, allying with um, the Wolves. I could definitely see that happening, but they don't want them to ally with them. Do you think they're making a good choice getting away from the Michelsons? I mean, they don't realize how powerful the Michelsons are, but it seemed like Haley and, you know, it seemed Rebecca and Elijah were okay with it. So do you think they're making a good decision getting away from the Michelsons? I mean, I could kind of see it, but I, I could kind of not as well. And... But overall, guys, was an absolutely amazing episode. By far, best episode of the season. I have no idea what's going to happen in these next two episodes. And I don't really want to know because the season's just so good and everything. I love that this episode was all showing how Dolly was just misunderstood, just like Klaus is misunderstood. And they're so similar and that Dolly just wants to save hope. And honestly, I think Klaus just needs to convince Haley and they can actually save hope. Because if hope, if this really is going to happen to hope, because honestly, hope could end up being very powerful. I mean, she's a hybrid. So there are a bunch of possibilities that could happen with hope and they should be worried for hope, even though they're not worried, but they should be. And they're not really worried and they really should be worried for hope. But overall, guys, this is my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. Overall, guys, I thought this was the best episode of the season. Absolutely loved this episode. I cannot wait for next week's episode. I love all of the switching of, of sides and allies in this episode. I thought that was awesome. But that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for Bates Motel. So I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.